the reason we are here this morning is to give clarity on the notice issued by the Minister of Works and Transport. This notice was uh, issued arising out of a study carried out by the National Building Review Board. Uh, we all know that as uh, construction costs keep rising, we've had a number of innovations, a number of new methods that uh, are in the public. So sometime in 2020, we did receive complaints from practitioners, by practitioners I mean engineers, architects and surveyors, together with some developers as well, on the safety of a certain method. By that time, the name of the method was not known. So we got into finding out how did, how did this method start, where did it start from, and where is it. We discover that there is a Ugandan who had registered patent rights to this method. And it is called, according to the patent, steel timber composite method. Steel timber concrete composite method, sorry. That is what it's called. It is a registered patent by one of the Ugandans. So when we get this, we invited this Ugandan here. We did request for a report from this person. In this particular report, we asked that he provides us engineering studies that confirm that this method is viable in our local context. Also, we asked for projects that had been executed by him using the method. We also asked him to detail to us procedures that he has followed to ensure all the sites that he has put up are safe for occupation. Following that, he responded with a write-up which was subjected to a technical team of experts in the area, specifically structural engineering, to ensure that whatever had been produced by the proponent of the method actually can stand in our circumstances. The, the experts were not convinced. When you look at the design, the proponents of this method have not produced any design to us which is structurally sound. The designs as presented to the National Building Review Board are designs of the conventional reinforced concrete frame. So they do the conventional design, but go to the implementation and do something else. That is what is happening in the country today. So none has been here to tell us, this is how I have designed this, and this is how it works. It's not there. They design the convention. Then on site, they do something else. That is one of our issues. The other issue is with the skilled labor for structural steel structures. We, we are still lacking. It is still inadequate. We have close to no certified welders in this country. And when we are using this method, that is very key. Now, when we don't have that, however much you design a sound design, and yet the person going to implement it is not able to implement it, it makes it unsafe. The other issue is with the material. This method relies most on timber. As we speak, timber is not graded in this country. From experience, in most houses that use the commonly known galama for their ceilings, 
from your experience, you should have seen some cracks in Ghana somewhere. This it can be attributed in part to the quality of the timber. If it is cracking on Ingalama, what about when it has to post another weight about? Today we do not have standards for which timber should be used where. And therefore, the safety of those buildings cannot be guaranteed. <coughs> we don't have standards. The timber in the market, all of us know what it looks like. You will find some of the houses, some of the homes using chinun for that slab. And we shall be losing lives and property. So this action is meant to save life and property. You don't want to have your hard hand and money put in something. It is a trial for our status. We are still trying it out. We are not sure that it works with the materials we have here. So, arising from that, we advise the minister that for this method to be safe in Uganda, we need a couple of things. We need skilled labor, people who are trained to put this up. We need the right timber. We need to be able to grade it and inform the public that when you are to use this method, this is the right type of timber that you should use. We need to be able to have standards that when you're designing, you design like this. And when you're implementing, you implement like this. So, this action taken by the minister is a proactive decision to save other people who are yet to get into this process. What do we plan to, go, to do going forward? Our plans are that we are going to engage the academia to do more research on this technology. In our Ugandan context, I want us to focus on Uganda, and let's not focus on it has done, been done in Germany, it has been done where the skilled labor in Germany is not here. The materials the other side are not here. So let us focus this method to our local conditions. We need to adapt the method to the local conditions. Let's not copy and paste. Let us adapt it to our local conditions. That is the essence of that prohibition. So, going forward, we are going to have a study of the method and how it can be safely adapted to our conditions. When it is safely adapted, we will come back to the public and say, the notice is vacated, this is the way to go. We will do, we will go through the same procedure we went through to arrive at this. Interestingly, between Friday and today, we've received close to four reports from the local authorities about the unsafe nature of the same method in the law in the various jurisdictions. And they are asking what we do, what we do, and we are referring them to that legal notice. So we call upon the public for those that have used this method. We are not here to strive for development or innovation. Innovation must be safe in our context and to be exact what, what was being done was not to innovate it was to copy because this already exists somewhere so we want an innovation for our context how does this method fit here where a developer is just going to call the sister to be in charge of the project something of that sort how is it fitting in our context? That's what we want. We want the innovation to address that particular question. For the public that has used this, this is supposed to save you, bring your building down, but to save you. We want such buildings to have structural integrity assessments, 
those that can stand should be left. Those that are going to be need retrofitting should be retrofitted to be safe for public use. Those that are not, that cannot be retrofitted, then we will have no option but to take them down for the good of our nation. So this is basically to bring confidence into our building sector. That is what this decision is about. And I wanted to, uh, to, to clarify that this, this matter of uh, this thing can be safe, it can be safe. She has been safe somewhere else. We want a demonstration of how it can be safe here. In our context, that is what I want you to report to the public. Let's not keep saying it has been done in Germany, 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 eh, Europe, Dubai. True, they have done it. Can the same be replicated with modifications to fit our context? We want to encourage innovation. We want to encourage development. But they must be safe for the public. I thank you. I think I can uh, take some questions. We are circulating online. NBRB does not circulate reports online. Our reports, whoever wants a report of NBRB, can always come and find it at NBRB. Do you know all the buildings? I will not say we know all the buildings, but we know quite a number. How do we know this? We work with the local authorities where we have building committees. We receive the number of reports. And I am sure even us as we move going home, we always see these buildings on our way. So we don't know all of them, but we have a sizable number that we, whose locations we know. Now, perhaps to clarify, when we started the study, for some developers, they actually volunteered to give us access to their buildings for their own safety. While the public was looking at this as uh, something meant to take down their buildings, there are those who offered to, for us to use their buildings as study specimen. So for those ones who went to their buildings, of course there are those that did not offer, but we still went to their buildings. So it's also not correct that we only went to the I said we started with uh, projects that belonged to the proponent because ideally the proponent's perspective was that yes, this thing can work when done well. And we said we agree. Can we see how well you have done it? So that if you have done it well, that's what we replicate elsewhere. But when we reached there, it wasn't done well. So then we say, can we now spread our wings and go outside? Because there are so many complaints. We have a very long list of all these projects. There are so many complaints of uh, these sites all over. So we picked them and went to those sites and also discovered, of course, as I said, those that belong to the proponent had some semblance of uh, of uh, an attempt to comply and ensure that these buildings are what? Are structurally sound. But the rest do not completely. And uh, we will share with you where our real challenges are. We've, we've already seen this. The first buildings that we inspected in 2020 are already serving. We've gone back to check on them. So that is why they started to that long. Because we needed, to, we needed to give it time for analysis. You don't wake up and say, this is a science. It's not for emotions, it's not for... It is a science. So we gave, it, we gave them time. So you go back and this is what you see. This is what you see on those sites. <coughs> These are the joints we are talking about. This, how does this hold the floor on the top? Can this hold the floor on the top? This one. 
This is what we are seeing. This is what we have. This is a joint. We are joining. This is a joint. So you have this small thing here. Supposed to hold this and this in place. So when when you load it, is this well enough to hold the weight of the top? This is what we have. So we expect the building committees, as I said, to gather this information. And for the public, we want to help you. It is to help you not to lose your money. A building, for as long as you compromise, it is certain that it will come down. It is so sure that it will come down. The only difference is when it comes down. But it must come down. That is it. So if yours has not come down today, it is going to come down. For as long as the right retrofitting is not done. I want to throw light on the uh, retrofitting. Yeah. Retrofitting is a process that comes after the study of a building. I will come to this building, for example, find out what it is designed to carry. Not so. And I look at what it is today and determine can it carry what it requires to carry. If it doesn't, then I make a design to ensure that it carries what it's supposed to carry. So the time limit for this retrofitting depends on the status of the building. Nobody is going to tell you it's going to take one day, two days. It depends. Someone may come, do a, uh, a, uh, an analysis here and discover they just need to put a metal plate, maybe just a metal plate to hold it, and that is it. And that may be done in one or two weeks, and that is done. So it depends. We, we are not going to prescribe how long it's going to take. It is problem specific. As you see from the pictures, there are some sites that are smarter than others. So most likely the smarter ones may require a shorter time, while the others are totally upside down and therefore require more engineering input and engineering time to help them retrofit it. As I said, we have a number, but we cannot say it is the total. We can't say that. That's why the local authorities, the building committees in the various jurisdictions are going to be tasked with identifying these places so that we ensure public safety. Even the public, if you have your building and it is of this nature, feel free to reach us. It is to save you. It is not to take your building down. It is to save your resources. You will be guided on how to make your building safe. Uh, would I want to name the patent owner? I think for privacy, for confidentiality reasons, I don't think so. I don't think so. We've recently had, we've had a number of these buildings fail. I think there's a recent one that was just circulating, this one. I think this one was in uh, Chitende, there's one in Chida, there's another one in Osu. A number of them have gone down already. Already, they have gone down. So, it's just a matter of time before most of them go down, if no action is taken. And we need to save people's resources. This is hard earned money that we cannot go to. We cannot live to go to waste because of uh, a technology that can be improved. So we are going to work together to improve the technology in our context. At what point will demolitions be done? As I said, first things first, assess the capacity of the building as it looks like today. Based on that, whatever report shall be produced should be given to a structural engineer because this report definitely highlights the weak points of a particular development. 
which part of this building is weak and therefore needs to be reinforced. Now, when that report identifies those portions, the structural engineers shall sit down and design mechanisms of improving those weak points. Now, those weak points, if they cannot be improved, that is when we say the building should do what? Should go down. But if they can be improved, the developer only needs to implement the retrofitting design, and that is all for his or her own safety. So really, demolition is the last resort. It is the last resort. As I said, this is a science. It can always grow. So we are going to look at it. We'll have a, we'll request that developers do that for their own safety. Yes.